Good morning. I'm encouraged to hear that so many of you are finding this time of daily prayer helpful, a way of beginning or even ending the day, setting time aside to hear God's word and to listen to him. For that is what is at the heart of the gospel, that God wants to commune with his people. Of course, God speaks to us primarily through his word, the Bible, but he also speaks to us in other ways, through a kind word, a caring hand of another in a difficult time. So if you do have any prayer requests, then please do send them to us using the link displayed on your screen. So let's begin our time together with some more words from Jesus calling. Waiting, trusting and hoping are intricately connected like golden strands interwoven to form a strong train. Trusting is the central strand because it is the response from my children that I desire the most. Waiting and hoping embellish the central strand and strengthen the chain that connects you to me. Waiting for me to work with your eyes on me is evidence that you really do trust me. If you mouth the words I trust you while anxiously trying to make things go your way, your words ring hollow. Hoping is future directed, connecting you to your inheritance in heaven. However, the benefits of hope fall fully on you in the present. Because you are mine, you don't just pass time in your waiting. You can wait expectantly in hopeful trust. Keep your antenna out to pick up even the faintest glimmer of my presence. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So this morning's psalm is Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge, and still the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me, and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. They have laid a net for my feet, and my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me, and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake my soul, awake harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. <clears throat> and so our first reading this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. But God remembered Noah, and all the wild animals, and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth, and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heaven were closed, 
and the rain from the heaven was restrained, and the waters gradually receded from the earth. At the end of one hundred and fifty days the waters had abated, and in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. At the end of forty days Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made, and he sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him, to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand, and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days, and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundred and first year, and on the first month, and on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives. Bring them out with every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. So Noah went out with his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives, and every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out of the ark by families. Rise up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Raise us up, O God that we may live in your presence. Our second reading this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Forsake me not, O Lord, 
Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. And we say together the Benedictus. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, Saviour of the world, you embrace the way of sacrificial love. And so we ask that you would give your church faith and courage to follow you wherever it may lead. We pray especially this day for our bishops Christopher and Jonathan, the clergy of Southwark Diocese, our deaneries and our communities, especially those of St Mary's and St James. Lord, we ask that you would raise up leaders who will dedicate themselves to the common good. In the heat of conflicting convictions, keep them in truth and integrity. Bless our Prime Minister, our Royal Family and all those who are in positions of authority. Lord, in you all peoples are one. Strengthen the bonds that create a cohesive and peaceful society. May we always think of others before ourselves. Jesus, you are the saviour of the world, and we ask that we look to you in our hour of need. Pour out your blessing upon all who are ill or weakened, and fill our hearts and theirs with your joy and your gladness. Jesus, you are the light of the world, and you lead us through the valley of the shadow of death, where we will fear no evil. Hear us as we remember for before you all those who have died. Bring us to dwell with them in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>